When you're using SignalR, you'll likely come across a scenario where you want to send messages to clients from other parts of your app that aren't always a server hub like we've been working in. For example, an MVC controller. This is possible using the hub context and dependency injection. All right, to demonstrate how we're gonna use the hub context, I'm gonna create a new MVC controller. Since I haven't done this yet, let's create a new uh, folder called controllers, and then I'm gonna add a new file called announcement controller. So let's do that. So let's start making this controller. First, I guess we'll add our namespace. We were using practical.ispnetcore.signalr. And we are going to create a controller called announcement controller. And this is just gonna derive from controller from MVC. So let's add that. Uh, we need to add our using statement here. So let's get that in there. All right. And our constructor is going to be taking the hub context uh, from dependency injection. So this is going to be all done through DI, which is built into ASP.NET Core. So what I can do here is I can take a I hub context, and it has a type parameter, which is what our, the name of our hub, the, our type, which is called message hub. So we'll add that um, in our constructor to be injected in. Let's add our using statement. All right. So let's just create a private backing property now. So call this one hub context. All right, there we go. And generate that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create two routes, two different methods. One just for returning a view, which we'll create in a second here. So we'll just call this method index, and we will return our MVC view razor view, which I'll create. And we'll just say this route is for an HTTP get, and we'll just do this at slash announcement. All right, and what we want to do here is what this view is ultimately going to do is send a message. So we'll create another I action result. Um, we'll call this one post, and we will do a from form, and we're going to take our forms actually just going to have a text area again for a message. So what we can do here is we can call our hub context, and we see that there's clients, so we can use that. And then we can send to all. And then I'll have our typical send async, which we've been seeing previously. So I can do receive message and then pass the message in. And then from here, I'm just going to do a redirect to action, just to redirect, redirect back to our index action. All right, there we go. Uh, let's add the HTTP post as well, since we actually want to make this a form, and we'll do that to announcement as well. All right. Actually, there's one thing I just noticed I need to fix, which is this actually needs to be async and task of iAction result, since we actually do need to call await here, since we're doing a return to action, or redirect to action, sorry. And we'll add our using statement. Okay. All right, so let's create the view. So let's create a new folder called views, since I haven't done that yet either. And then inside of this is going to be our announcement folder. And then inside here, we can actually create the index.cshtml. So let's do that. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, we probably are going to use some tag helpers. So let's get that in here. Let's do add tag helper. And let's just pull them all in for right now, just for the demo. So Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.MVC.TagHelper. All right. So let's just create a little simple page, add some body. So I'm going to create a form. And we will use ASP.NET Controller. And this is our announcement controller. And ASP.NET Action to post. And then we'll do methods, post. And we're going to add our text area now. That's we'll just call message, since that's what we called the parameter. And then we'll just add a submit button here, just to submit this form. And there we go. I'm going to hit F5, and let's run this in Chrome again. We'll do the same type of thing where I'll have one tab, which will be our existing page we were already using that we created before. 
and then we'll have a new tab that we will show our announcement. All right, so let's close this one. We'll duplicate. I'll move this one over to the right side of the screen, and let's go to our announcement that we just created. All right, there we go, and let's just send over a test so we can see that's still working. Perfect. So that was a simple example of how you can inject the hub context into any other part of your application, like an MVC controller. One thing to note about the hub context is it's not like when you're inside the hub class. So let's take a look at the iHub context here. And you can see you have access to clients and groups, but you do not have access to the connection ID or the caller. And this makes sense because there is no caller associated. You're actually sending deriving from your hub context, which is outside of the hub. So no invocation was made by a client. So this is why there is no connection ID or a caller.